Welcome back to the Real Estate Success Podcast, the hit weekly show featuring inspiring stories to help real estate entrepreneurs do more deals this year while increasing your cash flow and your net worth. My name is Jim Ingersoll and I'm your host for this podcast today. Today's show is going to be amazing as we talk about a plan for millennials, young people, and all other investors as well to become financially free in five years or less. As our millennial guest Brantley Gunn likes to say, quote, jumping outside your comfort zone allows your brain to rattle and create new opportunities. I love that quote, Brantley. Today you will uh, learn exactly how he's doing it in the cash flow capital of Jackson, Mississippi. We're gonna talk about how he is uh, creating leads and converting them into sales and why he absolutely loves being a young landlord in Jackson, Mississippi. Let me tell you about our new sponsor real quick. Carolina Hard Money is the leading hard money lender and commercial bridge lender in the Carolinas. If you're looking for investor funding, you should contact them today. Even better than that though, is the opportunity to work with them as a passive investor. Bill Fairman and Wendy Sweet are the brother sister team at Carolina Hard Money, and they have an opportunity that is worth your click today. So go to carolinahardmoney.com, click on the investor link today, check it out, and you can learn how you can become a very passive investor in their fund. I created this podcast to help motivate and inspire you to take massive action and build your business and your life the right way. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. I wanna welcome you back to the show if you're a loyal success listener. Hey, can you guys do me a huge favor? Leave me a review in iTunes, please. It helps so much, and I can't thank you enough for being a loyal success listener. If you're listening in iHeart or YouTube or Stitcher or on my website, leave me a comment. Let me know how you like today's show, because we have a fantastic show lined up today that you're going to love, because it's inspiring to see somebody as young as 25 years old realize that he is five years from financial freedom. So you're gonna love listening to Brantley Gunn and you are gonna be inspired to get out there and get your deals moving and get them done very, very quickly. Brantley, welcome to Real Estate Success Podcast. I am super excited to have you on with me today. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, Jim. Uh, I really wanna thank you for uh, letting me be on your podcast. I actually. I follow it quite a bit, and uh, I've received some really good uh, nuggets of information that I use. Uh, One thing that particularly stands out is uh, you were interviewing uh, someone, and they were talking about how they do 85% of their marketing on Facebook. Mm. And uh, I've actually implemented that uh, within the past week, and it's uh, done very well. So it's a huge honor to be on here. All right, we're going to dig into that in a minute because this morning I went to breakfast with Max Keller. Do you know Max? Uh, I'm not familiar with Max. Max is in Dallas, Texas, but he's in Virginia today. So him and I had breakfast. We hung out. And he said um, he wanted to get information on Facebook marketing. And I said, well, (laughs) Max, today, and he's been a past podcast guest too. I said, today's your day because I'm talking to Brantley this afternoon. Oh, well, great. Yeah, I, uh, I do a, a lot with technology. Uh, I, I must admit, I'm not the, the guru on Facebook just yet, but uh, one of the big parts of technology that I use are, is uh, systems and, and VAs. Mm-hmm. And VAs are virtual assistants, for those who do not know, uh, who work in uh, separate countries. Uh, it's people that I primarily hire are those from the Philippines. And they help me uh, along with my business because I'm too, I'm too cheap to hire a, a personal assistant here in Jackson. So I, all I, right. I for the virtual assistant. Brantley, tell tell all of our success listeners a little bit about yourself, like how old you are, where you live, you know that kind of thing, so everybody can warm up and get to know you a little better. Sure, absolutely. I uh, am 25 years old. I'm here in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, I have a household of one, just me, and uh, <laughs> but I do have some roommates who, uh, who who do rent some rooms from me that help me out with my house bill. But um, I started off. Uh, my story is a bit interesting. Uh, it actually starts the at the graduation of college back in 2013. Um, during gra- at that time, I decided to make two goals for myself. 
the first goal was uh, whichever industry that I got into, I would be there for uh, at least seven years. And the reason for that is because a, a lot of 20-somethings, they, they bounce around from industry to industry within a very short amount of time, and they don't really get good at what they do and thus reap a lot of rewards out of it. And uh, I, I noticed that through uh, certain reasons um, for – that would be for a podcast for another time. <laughs> so I decided to make that goal. And then the second one is uh, I always like to say that I am a bit inherently lazy. I don't like to do too much work but still like to get money. And uh, so I wanted to become financially free by the, t by the age of 30. And uh, so – I thought to myself, well, what is, exactly does that mean? Well, that means uh, for, at the time uh, getting $75,000 every year in profit without having to do very much, and that was through passive income. So $75,000 net profit income uh, every year, and the best way I figured out to do that was because of uh, was through houses. And my, now, a little bit of a caveat, my father has been in real estate full-time by himself uh, through, through him and his wife and my mom for 20 years, so he's the reason, a uh, big reason why I got into it. But upon graduation, two goals, wanted to be in the industry for seven years, whichever one that would be, would be financially free. Uh, well, I mean, those are phenomenal goals. So, and I, I know your parents, as you know, I mean, they're awesome, awesome people. You're so blessed. But <clears throat> take me down your path a little because the traditional path that the millennials have been on, and this whole podcast is about millennials and stuff, is you, you and I was taught the same thing, Brantley. You go to a good, good college, you study hard, and then you, um, you get a good job, you climb the corporate ladder. And and go that route, but you're saying you didn't go that route. You didn't, you know, college job, come out with all that student loan debt, and get a job. You went a different path. So tell me a little bit about your path. Sure, absolutely. Um, and I, you know, I'm when I actually was because I was taught that I actually went down the stereotypical path of yeah. going through college, and I did get a a good corporate job. Uh, at least it was a, a, a good job on paper. And uh, coincidentally enough, it was in real estate. So I moved to Cincinnati, Ohio for this corporate job. I was working as a financial analyst for a company that developed apartments all throughout the nation. Oh, wow. And uh, so within the first month of doing that, I absolutely hated the job. I could not stand it at all. Why, and it because wasn't you were because, like chained to your desk? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. It wasn't necessarily because of the people yeah. or, or the company. Yeah. I just couldn't do an eight to five job standing behind a desk uh, in a cubicle taking orders from a boss. Building somebody else's build a business, their equity, their cash flow, their net exactly. worth. Yeah. Exactly right. I was one of those guys that thought to myself, well, I could just be making money on my own right now and right. reaping all the rewards. Um, and uh, so I was there for about five months. And if I don't like something that uh, if I'm doing something that I don't enjoy, I'm not motivated to do it. So uh, needless to say, they fired me within five months of having that job. Hey. <laughs> I know. It's uh, probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, and but. During the time of that job, I bought a house in Cincinnati. So here I am. I have no job. I have a house mortgage I need to pay, and I have absolutely no money. So I decided to do what every other logical person would do. I started my own real estate company. <laughs> <clears throat> and um, I thought to myself, I was – I had something to really prove to myself and go out and buy all these houses in order to accomplish that goal that I told you about being financially free by the age of 30. And uh, so I bought this uh, list of absentee owners with high equity in the Cincinnati market and I thought this was my golden ticket. So I, mail I did mailings out and uh, I thought I was going to get all these houses. I got one, one house. Uh, it was an owner financed house. 
that's what I was really shooting for was because I didn't have any money, but I wanted to get all this passive income and I couldn't qualify with a bank. So owner financing was the way to go. But, uh, so within three months, this was March of 2014, got one deal fast forward another five months, the fall of 2014, that's still the only deal that I got. So I wasn't doing too hot. And, um, by this point, my parents had figured out that uh, I was going to end up on the street before I ever get another corporate job, and they were able to convince me to come back to Jackson, Mississippi, where they were able to to mentor me. Not necessarily, I would we we didn't necessarily do deals together, but they were able to mentor me. So if I were to do it all over again, uh, I would still probably try I would still try it in Cincinnati but the first thing I would do is get a mentor and you know you have a good mentor when you can call them up every single day bounce ideas off them ask them questions and strategize um, and the best two ways to do that is probably is find somebody who's uh, old and builds up their wealth to uh, who's ready to pass on to the next generation or find somebody who is pretty much uh, getting deals, making money, but they're doing it all themselves and they need somebody else to, mm -hmm. to help them out with their volume. Mm -hmm. um, so if I were to do it all over again, I would try to shoot Well, that, one of that's those a great things. point to make. And I think it's, it's really important. <clears throat> See, Brantley, when I started, I was in my early 20s also, like you. That was a long time ago for me, which sucks. But anyways, that's a whole other story. You're still looking really good. Thank you. Hey, but Cheryl and I, we, we sort of screwed up. I watched my dad uh, be a landlord also, Brantley, but he was part-time. And he made it look really easy. So we jumped in and we bought a duplex and didn't have a clue what we were doing. And I didn't have a mentor, any training, no network, nothing. And we really struggled. And because of that, Cheryl said, that's it. I'm never being a landlord again. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is like my early 20s dream, right? So it cost me about 10 years to get her back in. So, you know, your point of getting that mentor, getting your network, getting your training is is really well spoken. It's very profound for a young man like you. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> what would you tell other millennials that are your age that are working their J-O-B, their nine to five? They feel like they're chained to the desk or got handcuffs on their chair and they're tied to their computer, but they want that total freedom and they love your goal of being financially free by 30. I mean, is it possible by investing in real estate that a millennial could be financially free by 30? And how, what kind of encouragement would you give to other millennials listening right now? Well, I think the biggest thing that I can, uh, I can't really tell them this is your, uh, the, do these three easy steps yeah. and you'll be financially free. Uh, as you know, uh, there's a million ways to skin a cat in real estate. So what works for me might not necessarily not work for them. But the biggest advice that I can give is that you need to actually go out and do it. Uh, just like the, the Nike logo says, yeah. go, just do it. You can plan all you want. You can read all the books about real estate that you want. But if you don't go out and actually walk, uh, walk the talk, then it's not going to happen. Uh, there's this great video on TED, and uh, the title is escaping me at this moment, but I'll send you an email about it, Jim. Cool. Uh, th it's, only about, it's only about four or five minutes. And this guy was talking about, he was, uh, gave, gave this challenge to people from age six to CEOs uh, of huge corporate companies to build a spaghetti, uh, a spaghetti tower <laughs> and put a marshmallow on top. And he found that the two best groups, luckily the best group of people who, did the, uh, who, who were the best at it were engineers, but the second best was six-year-olds, hmm. oddly enough. They did better than CEOs. They huh. did better than business uh, majors. And that's because uh, they didn't s sit around trying to figure out what to do. The first thing they did was they tried to build the spaghetti within five minutes' time. Right. 
And that's how they were able to be more successful is because they didn't sit around planning. They just went out and they tried to build it. That's, that's a, the same thing with real estate. That's a great example. And I'm a recovering engineer, as you know, so I'm, I'm glad the engineers did OK <laughs> there. Let me ask you this. What kind of roadblocks should millennials kind of watch out for if they want to invest in real estate? roadblocks that's uh that's an interesting you know, question because a lot of them will come back like you've got to have a lot of money to invest in real estate that's one roadblock right that's yeah and as you know jim that's absolutely not true when i started uh after i got fired from my job i had no money at all and so i was still able to invest the thing about real estate is that you don't need money to invest you just need access to it so whether mm. you convince the homeowner to give you owner financing or you go on network uh, events to find people who will partner or joint venture with you yep. all you really need is to go out and find the deal and once you find the deal um, you can make uh, everything else fall in place all right so let's go there let's talk about finding deals um, tell me about your Facebook experiment and how your testing's going and what's going on with Facebook marketing these days well again it's really in its infancy stage it's more the alpha than than even beta but um, I uh, uh, have used it to market for so my business business plan is rentals and financing houses yep. and I've used Facebook uh, to find people to buy these houses that I'm willing to finance them to um, and you can also use it to, to buy houses as well which uh, again we're, we're currently working on um, but the way that I personally find deals is is banks now most investors they deal with the homeowners and if you go talk to any veteran of real estate, uh, it's most likely they'll tell you that their best deals have come from probate. And the reason for that is because these people have inherited a house that they have no emotional connection to. So they're really uh, willing to give it at, uh, at a great deal. It's the same thing with banks too. I would say banks are the second best people, to, uh, second best sellers to buy from because they've inherited a bank from a foreclosure but they have no emotional connection to it. So they're willing to give it up for really expensive uh, or really cheap price. So are you and, going through like local brokers for those bank deals? Are you finding them like on auction.com? I mean, like where do you typically mm -hmm. find your bank deals? So it all starts, that's a, that's a great lead in question, Jim, because it all starts for me with foreclosures. Now, uh, I won't get into the minute details of the Jackson market, but know this, that it's very complicated to follow the foreclosure market in Jackson. They're advertised in all different types of sources. They're not located in one central spot. So it's very difficult to keep up with. And most of the houses that do go to foreclosures, people do not buy. If you were to go to a place like Austin, they'll buy pretty much sure. every You're talking house about at the courthouse steps? steps? That's right, at the yeah. courthouse steps. Gotcha. Um, so I, f my primary, I finally, primarily buy those houses after they've gone to the steps. Most people think that once the bank gets the house, from after once they bought it from the steps, that no, when nobody else has bought it, that they immediately list it on the MLS. That is, the secret to that is that's absolutely not true. Just like a wholesaler has a list of buyers that he sells to once he gets a house under contract, the banks do the same exact thing. So I've networked with banks to get on their buyers list mm -hmm. so that I can buy the house before it actually goes on the public market. But the reason why I follow the foreclosures it, one of the reasons is so that I can potentially buy the steps, but the main reason is that I can keep a catalog of all these houses. So mm. when I do go buy an REO, I know two things. I know how long that they've owned the house, and it's just like a seller. The longer a motivated seller has owned the house, the more motivated he or she's going to be. They don't like so, aged inventory, do they? No, no. Think about it, all the expenses. It's a non-performing asset. They got all the insurance. It's a vacant risk policy. I mean, all the things. Absolutely. They call it non-performing assets, but really it's a liability for them right. and an expense. And the second thing that I know is I know what the opening bid was on the foreclosure. So when a, uh, when that 
the opening bid on the steps nine times out of ten indicates what the principal amount the previous homeowner had the house for before it went to foreclosure so i know how much the bank is in for the house so let's say it's a hundred thousand dollar house went to the steps for seventy thousand i mean i've seen banks not uh hold on houses for literally years before they put it on the public market and they've held it on for a year, I know they're going to take much less than $70,000, even though fixed up, it's worth a hundred. <clears throat> so, okay, so you go out there, you find these houses, and these are uh, like local regional banks, mostly portfolio type lenders, would you say? They, they are local and they are also national. I have uh, been able Good. to network with some wow. people with uh, national banks as well, such as Bank of America and other big uh, Good for banks. You. Good for you. Your network's <clears throat> everything in real estate, isn't it? It absolutely true. And the, the way I found uh, was able to get that those contacts was actually um, the same way I met you, Jim, was by going to the Financial Friends Network Cruise. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, I've been attended, attending that for quite a while, and it's been paid huge dividends. Yep, it is. It's a great event. Okay, so once you find these deals, tell me a little bit about your your bread and butter deal, Brantley, and what it looks like and what it feels like, and then what your exit strategy is. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the typical deal that I get is a house between $20,000 and $40,000. And the minimum rent that I will receive on the house is $750 a month. <clears throat> um, so my, my bread and butter is rental houses. Yeah. But if I'm in a, uh, a lot of times, I, and I'm moving more towards this way now, is uh, rack mortgages. Uh -huh. So I'll uh, get the house under contract. I'll have, uh, whether it be an investor or a joint venture, to, to loan me money on the house. And then I'll go take that initial loan and then loan the house at a, at, at a higher rate to a homeowner. Um, and this way, it really improves the, the, uh, the neighborhood a lot more because there's a sense of pride of ownership with them. And, and uh, it really helps out the neighborhood and helps out people who couldn't otherwise get a loan from the bank. I think that I would call that the Bank of Brantley deal. Yeah, the Bank of Brantley, there you go. <laughs> the Bank of Brantley deal, because you're in that case, you're not a landlord, you're the bank. You're, uh, not, you're a note holder, Yeah, right? I kind of like the bank. Uh, I don't, but, but uh, we, it's, we loan these houses to individuals that will have a significant down payment, so they are responsible enough to save it's just their credit doesn't reflect that. Sure, sure. Yeah, and I think that's that. You know, I think it's it's great that you can you can increase home ownership. So in some cases you'll do a Bank of Brantley deal. In some cases you're a landlord. What is it like to be a 25 year old landlord in Jackson, Mississippi? Uh, it's uh, it, it, it's a sense of community for me uh, because when I rent out these houses to these people, I meet a lot of people on the way and you start really getting involved with your local community um, because the, the your network is your net worth. And a lot of times these rental houses will become, uh, I'll start ending up financing it to the, the tenant or to one of their friends. So most of my uh, houses that I finance to come from my tenants or somebody that they know. So it's really, uh, it, it's actually quite fun to be a landlord because you get a sense of community and you're helping individuals out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think, I mean, anytime you can buy a house and be all in and say 30 and rent for 750 a month, that's, that's a 3x plus rent to price ratio. I mean, that is cash flow, and that goes back to why you're focusing on it, because in five years, you're going to be financially free, aren't you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, be able to go on cruises all the time and drink pina <laughs> coladas, you know? And hang, but out, with, I, hang out with me and Cheryl, right? That's right. That's right. Buy, buy you dinners, what I would do. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll buy you a drink. You buy me dinner. All right, I see how that goes. But you know, I think I think it's amazing because you sound so confident that you're going to achieve that in the next five years, and I believe you are because I know your pathway. Have you always been like that confident, or is it just like things are really clicking right now? Things are really clicking right now. Like uh, as I was mentioning before, that first year when I was in Cincinnati, mm. I thought that 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 would never come because. You know, when when you set a goal for yourself, you got to work backwards and you know, OK, well, this is what I need to achieve in this every single year in order to reach that goal. I just wasn't reaching it at all. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, the, the first couple of years since I've been back in Mississippi, I wasn't reaching it. Um, but uh, at, through constant perseverance, you, I was able to really find things that started clicking to where I was able to catch up on the years that I was behind and then really be on my, my task. So I'm not a, I, uh, not a very high volume guy. Uh -huh. I uh, like to keep things a bit consistent. So I'll buy maybe one or two houses a month. Mm -hmm. And that's really all I need. Now, if I'm going to start a family anytime soon, that may change. Um, but uh, as because I've figured out, I've networked with, with these banks and I've got these access to these lists that um, I get before they ever go in the market, I know that I'm able to get at least one or two houses every single month. I mean, that is great. So you've got deal flow, you've got uh, private lenders, joint venture partners. Hey, if we've got um, one of our success listeners that would like to participate in a deal with you in Jackson, Mississippi, mm -hmm. because... $30,000 all in rent for seven fifty dollars is a great deal. And it, having the skill to put that deal together is amazing. How can somebody reach out and contact you? Well, first of all, they can, um, if they want to email me, that I'm certainly happy to give out my personal email address, um, which is my name, brantleygun at gmail.com. If they want to check me out on my website, they can go to buy my Jackson home. Dot com, and um, uh, they can uh, see the phone number and reach me that way. All right, very good, very very good. Um, all right, well that is great. So you you didn't take the tr traditional mode of college, job, huge amount of debt, and climb the corporate ladder. See, I also made the mistake of climbing the corporate ladder for quite a few years, Brantley, and mm. it felt so good to get those promotions. <laughs> 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 made me sick when I finally jumped off, but really, oh wow! Don't well, you, you were think, able to do something I couldn't do. Yeah, don't you think that um, when when you get into that mode like I was, that it just kills your your creativity, your 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 ability to be innovative as well? Yeah, I, I think um, the the mother. In desperation is the mother of innovation. <laughs> um, so when you sort of get in, in this cog of climbing the corporate ladder, you know, needed to do just I need to be with this company for the next X amount of years, uh, it really does impede on innovation um, because you're so in line with what you need to do. But when you go out of your comfort zone, such as you did when you left your job, yeah. then your brain really starts to rattle a bit and you start thinking of all these different ideas that you maybe of ways you can start creating income. And that's sort of, that goes back to what I was saying before. Is something, if you want to get involved in real estate, you just have to go out and do it. You have to put yourself in an uncomfortable situation in order to achieve it what you want to do. I love the way you said when you get outside your comfort zone, it forces yeah. your brain to rattle. And that is a great quote. I love it. <laughs> so uh, that is really good. I give you kudos on that one. Um, all right. We are running out of time, but do you have any, any like success tips for the millennials out there who are thinking, man, I just got to break these chains off my desk. I want the, I want freedom. I want to be on the, on the Brantley path of financial freedom in the next five years. Just right. what deal should they be looking at? Because gurus, gurus out there, they flood us. They say you should do subject twos and self-directed IRAs and Roths and, mm -hmm. and flips, front flip, back flip, forward flip, sideways flip, <laughs> flip into the water. You know, uh, all this stuff. They always have something new and new software, new platform, new this, that and the other thing. But 
sometimes they make it too complicated. Right. As I mentioned, you can scan a cat of re the real estate cat a million different ways. Yep. So something that you're going to plan to do without actually going out and do it, I can guarantee you that it's going to change within just a matter of months in a totally different way. So the biggest thing that I would advise you is if you've never gone out and done real estate before, but you want to do it, go find that mentor. Go find that old man who's ready to pass on to the next generation or go find that person who's doing it, everything themselves and they're ready to grow it and take on uh, a partner such as you who has a lot of grit and drive. All right. Great tips. Bradley, thank you so much for being my guest on Real Estate Success today. It is you for a young man. You really laid out a lot of profound thoughts and I give you a lot of credit for being an action taker. Again, you're really fortunate to have a great network and, and a great family, but you're the one. I know your dad is not doing your deals for you because I know your dad, right? <laughs> yeah, if you know my dad, you know that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the I love that because he taught you to fish rather than just give you the fish. Now you're out there, you're creating you know your own meal um, on your own deals. So congratulations on that. You are the one making it happen. And I'm super excited for you. Five years from now, you're going to be retired and loving life. Well, again, it was a great honor being on here, Jim. And it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for having me on. All right. Thank you, Brantley. That's it for this special episode of the Real Estate Success Podcast. Thanks again to all of our loyal success listeners tuning in today. It has been so great to spend this time with each of you today. My name is Jim Ingersoll, and I greatly appreciate all of our listeners. Thanks to all who leave comments, reviews, and those who share this content with your social media networks. We really greatly appreciate it. I've got a special uh, free investing gift for you today waiting at bigmoneyinvestor.com forward slash free gift. Pick that up and put it to use and be sure to check out our sponsors over to Carolina Hard Money and connect with Bill and Wendy Sweet. Tell them you heard this on the Real Estate Success Podcast and you can uh, check out the amazing opportunities to invest passively. Hi, I'm Bill Fairman with Carolina Capital Management and Carolina Hard Money. This is my sister and business partner, Wendy Sweet. How much are you earning on your real estate investments? And how passive do you really want to be? Also, what does freedom look like for you and your family? The answers to all those questions are at carolinahardmoney.com. Click on the investor tab, carolinahardmoney.com, investor tab.